Good day, brothers and sisters. I'd like to welcome the JCC Sunday Schools in session, where Sunday school matters to God. Please like and leave us a comment. We would love to hear from you. You can ask questions, make comments. Let us know how you feel about the lesson. We would love to hear from you. Also, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to our channel and become part of the JCC Sunday School family. So hit that subscribe button right now. Our lesson today is coming from 2 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 1 through 11. And it's titled, God's Comfort in Trouble. Have you ever gone through something and you needed to be comforted by a parent? Maybe a sibling, or maybe it's a friend. Comfort is one of those things we need from time to time. Our lesson is going to speak to us about comfort, where we can find it, who is the ultimate giver of comfort, and what the church as a whole can do to bring comfort in trying times for others. Let's get into the lesson and see what it has to offer us today. Verses 1 through 6 read, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Archaea, grace be to you and peace from God, our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounded by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for our consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same suffering which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for our consolation and salvation. Our first outline is, deals with comfort. God comforts us in the midst of worldly tribulations. Verses 1 and 2, Paul introduces himself as he did in his first letter to the church of Corinth as an apostle. And question 1 asks, how did Paul end up in the apostolic ministry? Notice verse 1 says, it was by the will of God. It was Christ who called Paul to be an apostle to the Gentiles. The word for will in the Greek is thelma which means what one wishes or has determined will happen. Paul Damascus' role encounter was the will of God that changed his course of life, and thus Christ called him to serve as an apostle and not just as, as a disciple. So what is the difference between a disciple and an apostle? A disciple is a student or one who learns from a teacher, but an apostle is one who is sent to deliver those teachings they have learned to others. So an apostle is a messenger who is sent to deliver or spread the gospel of Christ. Now, there are three qualifications to be an apostle. First, to be an apostle, one must have seen the resurrected Christ. The second thing that we can learn about the qualification of being an apostle is that they have been gifted miraculous power from the Holy Spirit. And finally, an apostle must be chosen by Christ or the Holy Spirit. Paul met all three criteria. And as a result, the will of God is fulfilled for his life. See, the point being is God sovereignly chooses each of his servants for a specific time and a place to accomplish his purposes. The question is, are we accomplishing his purposes? Are we surrendering ourselves to accomplish what God wants in our lives? We should want God to have his wish, his will, and his plans fulfilled. And our life and plan should always agree with his will, not our own. This can be seen in Paul's conversion. Paul's desire was to persecute the church by destroying it, but Christ's will for Paul's life was to promote the building of the kingdom of God. He was commissioned to go and build the church in the, of the Gentiles. Christ profoundly changed Paul's will to the will of God for his life. So the question begs, are we fulfilling our will or the will of our Lord and Savior? The answer will help determine your place of comfort. Question two asks, who replaces Sothenes from 1 Corinthians as Paul's companion? As we read further in verse 1, Timothy replaces Sothenes. Timothy became Paul's right-hand man. Verse 2 shows us something as well. It says grace and peace from God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, grace and peace go hand in hand. Grace leads us to peace, and peace brings about the fulfillment of God's purposes. See, the point is God gives his people the grace and peace they need to fulfill their purpose. 
Grace works in our lives so God's will would be done in the lives of the believer. Notice who are the givers of grace and peace. It is God and Christ. Allow me to show you something. When Paul had that thorn in his side, he prayed three times for it to be removed. But it was because of the grace of God that God said it was sufficient that he can continue to go on. Paul found the peace needed to accomplish and fulfill his purpose for God. It was the assurance of grace that allowed peace to reign in his life. And as a result, Paul was able to accomplish and continue to press on. He didn't allow the situation to get him no more. He was comforted knowing that God's grace was there with him. And knowing that that God's grace was there, it gave him the peace that he needed to do what God wanted to do. When we cannot accomplish an assignment, it might be because we have not allowed the grace needed to give us the peace we need to fulfill God's purposes. Question three says, what is the overall theme of this week's passage of Scripture? This passage deals with comfort in affliction. Many times we will find ourselves as children of God being afflicted. But we need to learn to find the comfort in that affliction so that we don't get consumed by the affliction and we can continue to do the will of God. Question four says, who does Paul say is the source of all comfort? God is the source of all comfort. Paul praises God the Father for being the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort because he is there to comfort us in our afflictions. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Even when we are in the valley of the shadow of death, he's there with us to lead and guide us. Because God is faithful to comfort us in our afflictions, we can have the strength by faith we need to comfort others who are also being afflicted. Notice in verse 3, Paul says, Blessed be God. When we find ourselves in a place of suffering, we should remember what God means to us. It is in the place of suffering we can find the comfort and victory needed if we praise God first because he is God. When we praise him because he is God, we can begin to find comfort in God. Second thing, we praise him because he is the father of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is because Jesus Christ that we can call God father. And we can approach him as our heavenly father. God sees us in his son and loves us as he loves his son. We are dear to the heavenly father. And because we are dear to him and now we find ourselves in his son, he's also dear to us as well as adopted sisters and brothers in Christ. So we praise him because he is God. And we praise him because he is the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And finally, brothers and sisters, we praise him because he is the father of compassion. When we look at this here word father, in the Jewish world, it means originator of. Satan is the father of lies, meaning he's the originator of them. And God is the father of compassion because all compassion originates with him. God in his grace gives us what we do not deserve. In his mercy, he does not give us what we do deserve. He puts strength into our hearts so we can face the trials and triumph over them. The English word for comfort comes from two Latin words meaning with strength, and the Greek word comes from meaning come alongside and help. It's the same word used for the Holy Spirit as the comforter. God encourages us by his word and through his spirit, and usually does so through other believers who give us the encouragement we need to persevere and push on. So when you find yourself discouraged because of difficult circumstances, Look to the Lord and realize that all that God is to you. Do like the psalmist said, like David said, I lift my eyes into the hills from whence comes my help, knowing that my help comes from the Lord. So when suffering comes, and it will, brothers and sisters, remember what God is to you and praise him in the midst of your situation. The point is, God's comfort towards us has multiplied benefits. It is used through us to help others as well. God uses people to comfort people. God uses people to come alongside other people to help ease their suffering. Question five says, how many of our afflictions does God comfort us in? Paul says all. God comforts us in all of our afflictions, not just some of them, but all of them. Nothing we go through is so bad that God cannot comfort us. His comfort does not come after the affliction is over, but while we're going through it. Now, comfort is more than just a little word to cheer us up, to make us feel good. Paul does not mean that there. That word means, like I say again, to strengthen us. 
He wants to strengthen us in these here times to let us know that we can be strong. When we're, when we're weak, God is strong. That's the comfort that we need in order to endure and persevere. Question six is, what assurance do we have about sharing in Christ's suffering? Paul's assurance to those who suffer is that Jesus knows how to comfort us because he has suffered more than anyone else. So there's a peace that comes with knowing Christ. When we know Christ, it gives the assurance that if we share in his suffering, then we can also expect to share in his comfort. Question seven asks, how can your suffering help another person? God may bring someone who is going through a real battle into your life someday, and you will be able to help them because you have already been through something. And when you've been through something, you can be a testimony to share how God strengthened you, how God helped you get through the situation to make things better. Verse 7 speaks to us about the hope and comfort. Let's read it. Verse 7 says, and our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. Paul suffered mightily for Christ's sake, and he did it in a way in order to bring the gospel to the Corinthians. They suffered so that the Corinthians could be saved so that when they suffered, they would also have comfort in Christ. Now, the Corinthians proved their salvation by being willing to endure on the trials and tribulations, going through the persecution and the fact that they still had hope and joy during a difficult time, they knew they could be comforted of Christ. This is what James is trying to tell us when he says, count it all joy when you're going through divers temptation. Why? Because there's a perfection process going on and we should find joy in that. We should understand that during these times, God's grace is abounding. During these times of persecution, we may not realize it, it may not feel good to us, but God is making a way out of no way and strengthening us, strengthening our faith, strengthening our trust, strengthening us with our hand in God's hand during such times. See, the point is, patient and endurance in trials are evidence of God's work in those who trust in him. A spirit-filled believer knows that God is with him in the fire of tribulation. That doesn't mean that we should try to go out and seek suffering. When it comes knocking at our door and we are there, we should not fall under the weight of it. We should know that we can be strong in the Lord. I just finished a study with the church on Daniel chapter 3. When the three Hebrew men, some people call them boys, I prefer to call them men, went into the fire, they made a resounding proclamation that our God is able to save us from the fiery furnace. But even if he chooses not to, we will not give in to the pressure of bowing down. It was in the fire I explained to the church that Christ met them, not before. Sometimes God shows us, I will meet you in your sufferings to show others my power and my might. As a result, Nebuchadnezzar made his own proclamation about our Heavenly Father. He said that if anybody spoke against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's God, they will be killed. Their house will be burned down. He made a proclamation that their God was a mighty, mighty God. They trusted God even in the fire, and he showed up. We used to say he may not come when we want him, but he's always on time. Do you realize you serve an on-time God? And even today, God has given us the Holy Spirit to guide us through the hard times of life and to navigate our course to make sure we stay in step with the Lord. Verses 8 and 9 are going to deal with our next outline, which is affliction. It reads, For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our troubles which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we were despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raised the dead. Question 8 says, How severe were Paul's personal suffering? The suffering Paul endured felt like a death sentence to him. He said they suffered excessively in Asia such that their human strength was gone from him. But God still comforted them even when they looked death square in the eye. They had no hope but only to trust in God. And because they trusted in God, the very experience that they did, they allowed, it allowed God's grace and intervention to come on them in that situation. See, when we have no hope, Can we too still put our trust in God? 
No matter the situation or odds, we are to look to the hills from which cometh our help because all our help comes from the Lord. That there includes comfort as well. Question nine says, what is the one reason why suffering comes to all believers? God allows these things to come to us in order to keep us close to him. See, many times trials are for that very purpose, that God wants to teach us how to trust in him even more. When we go through something, it allows us to put our trust completely in him. God did deliver them from death, and Paul believed that God would continue to persevere in their lives until they had accomplished their ministry and calling. God is the only one whom they put their hope in because of his proven power to deliver. This is the thing that I want to press upon us today. We must also put our hope in God because he has proven time and time again throughout the word of God to be the power to deliver his people from whatever affliction, whatever oppression, whatever sickness, whatever illness, whatever it is, he has proven to be a deliverer. See, the point is our troubles can seem overwhelming, but Christ gives us grace to endure them all. Remember the grace we need to have peace in the storm. Saints, access God's grace and see it for yourself that it is sufficient. It is made strong in our week. To God be the glory. Verses 10 and 11 says, Who delivered us from such a great death and do of deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us? Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Our last outline is going to deal with deliverance through prayer. Now that is something to shout about right there alone. Question 10 says, what is the key to perseverance? The key to perseverance is not trying harder or wrestling more with issues, but rather to turn to God in prayer. Let me say that again. It's not about how you can try to persevere and work harder or do this or that to try to wrestle with the issues or, or the problem or the affliction. No, the key to perseverance is knowing how to pray to God. Prayer changes things, brothers and sisters. Prayer opens doors. Prayer is the one thing the church needs to do in this day and time. Paul here is confident that God will keep looking out for them and comfort them due in part to their prayer life. See, the prayers of the saints of Corinth was also an instrumental part that played in helping them persevere. And this is how so many can take the opportunity to participate in the work of kingdom. If you don't have the voice to sing, if you don't have the hand, the gift of administration, maybe you're not a great teacher, maybe you're not a preacher, but you can be instrumental in the kingdom of God by just simply praying. Prayer is a ministry that bestows favor and blessings upon those prayed for and can also bestow blessings on those who did the praying. Praying is a thing, this is what I always teach the church. Praying is an instrument that invites God into our situation. When we pray, we should be inviting God in our situation to bring comfort, to bring deliverance, to bring healing, to bring whatever we need. We should invite God to intervene in our situation. See, the point is Christians can help one another endure tough times through steadfast prayer. This is how we progress the church and the kingdom of God. We will win this battle by staying on our knees. If we need comfort, need some issues resolved, Need God to show up and show out in your situation? Come together as a corporate body and pray and watch and see how God moves. This ends our lesson on God's comforts in trouble. God wants us to persevere in trials, and he may permit them to come. But know this here, brothers and sisters, he's always there in control. And when they do come, God will never leave you nor forsake you. It is God who enables us to, be the, to go through the trial. He gives us the strength that we need, the grace that we need with the help of the Holy Spirit to endure and persevere through trials. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. If you have, leave us a comment. If you have any questions, leave those too. We would love to hear from you. Well, that's all for this week. Come back next week. Same time, same channel. Be blessed now.